Hello my fellow survivors, this is B1 from Dead Zig Gaming and today I am going to show you some survival tips. A few of you have been asking how you guys would survive in a game of State of Decay and I thought I'd, you know, try and help you all out. So, first things first, uh, I am actually on the last mission of the game so I have accrued some quite a lot of resources right at the moment. My morale's quite low because the character just died but <clears throat> Other than that, first character to die throughout the whole game, which I'm pretty happy about. Right, before you do anything, when you are in your base, you need to select what things you're going to take with you. So, melee weapon is always a is the primary thing, because melee is pretty much the thing that you're going to be using most when you're running about. Right at the start of the game, you get things like 2x4s, you get pipes, hatchets, wooden branches. They're all pretty pretty crap really. It's only when you start getting the heavier weapons or the weapons like a wrenches or the pipe wrench and other various me big metallic items that they take ages to degrade, they take ages to wear out and they're fantastic to take. The only problem is they do cost 90 influence to take so you better build your influence prior. So the next thing you need to do is sort out what um, things you're going to take, like medicine and stuff. So usually I take three painkillers. I take some... Ba -ba -ba -ba, something to increase my stamina, which is coffee. And usually if um, I take an energy drink, just in case I'm out there longer than I should be. So, you've essentially got your melee weapon, you've got your healing items, you've got your thing to keep your stamina up, you've got something to prevent the stamina loss you get if you end up being out there too long, or you have a mission become active and you can't switch out your character. Now the next thing you need to select is firearms. You, some of you guys prefer firearms, some of you don't, but it's always handy to have that long range ability. So it depends on really what you want to go for, I mean you can equip a submachine gun and spray and pray, you can pick an assault rifle and you know, daka 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 everything, you can snipe rifles, Fantastic for long range, or shotguns, which are great for close range and blowing enemies up. So, what we're gonna do? Let's say let's take a shotgun. We'll take the A series mod one, and then you need to take some ammo. So I'd say take 30 rounds, just because shotguns don't really to go, don't really go through ammo that much. Shotguns are really mainly there for knocking enemies down if they're chasing you. Occasionally you can t you can kill an enemy with a headshot because of the spread. But that's basically it. So, it's night time in my game. Which isn't too bad. Could be a lot worse. Uh, another survival tip, guys, is when you set up your main base, always make sure that you put outposts around it. Uh, I'm currently in the storage the truck storage facility, that is one home base. Uh, I'll show you the other home bases I currently know. You have the police, de well, not the police department, you have a house here, which is the Savani residence, which is the one uh, the one gentleman asks you to check, asks you to check out. Uh, the next one is up here. If I can find it. Uh, it is a house around this area. I do believe it was that one, but um, survivors of other survivors took over that home in my game, so I don't think I can use it. But um, that is another house there. You have the warden's camp right at the top here, but that is uh, that is only small and really only a training tra training area. And there are a couple of others. Uh, I think you can actually occupy the gas station area around here with the dinosaurs and stuff. But as far as uh, from what I can tell. This place here is the best place to go. So, survival tips. Uh, my personal survival tip, best survival tips, is when you get things such as missions that include your friends, such as sadness, like this guy. Talk to Ed Jones, let's go for a walk. Always solve problems in your base first. And always make sure that everybody's happy. For the sole fact being that if your morale drops, people will start to leave, which will make life a lot more difficult. Hey, come on. Also, another thing is fully upgrade your watchtower. Watchtowers are fantastic because 
if someone up there is, is up there with a gun, the AI in this game is a pretty good shot with pistols and other long range weaponry, and they will even let off rounds with shotguns. If you give a. Oh, okay. Let's back up. So, my personal um, advice is when you come. When you are using a. Um, when you give the AI some weaponry, you only really need to give them one round because the AI does have unlimited weapon, unlimited ammo. So what you do is just take out some of these. There we go. And it always helps when you have a survivor with you when you're doing other quests. So if you have a quest such as this one, and there's another mission you've got, ah, just go grab an armored zombie. Finish it off. It always helps. So a thing about combat as well. When you're in combat and by a zombie, if you press A, you normally jump. But what you'll do is a jumping attack. I will show you now. If you tap A, you'll do a jumping attack. If you press Y, you'll do a kick. And if you press X, you'll do a you'll you'll do a punch. If you hold the left bumper and hold X, you do an overhead swing. If you press A, you'll do a drop kick and try not to get bitten by an armored zombie. As you can see, I'm doing quite terrible at the moment. Nah, nah. Um. Right, so let's take some painkillers. Painkillers take a while to work, but if you hold that and press Y, you do a push. So you can link these t attacks together to get some really, really good kills, really funny, <laughs> really funny things to do. There we go. So melee isn't just tapping X, you can use other abilities, uh, things such as drop kicks are fantastic for knocking enemies over. Uh, if you tap the left bumper and Y, that push attack is great for getting enemies up <coughs> like this, allowing you to do a finisher where you crush the jaw, very um, Walking Dead like with Michonne. Um, but yeah, basically do missions in your base first because they are the most important those are the things you need to keep your morale up you need to keep people interested in staying at your home base because if people run off we got this place locked down they'll die they'll, and they'll, they'll, you know there will be problems so what we get so this guy's mission is done so we need to head back to home base and that will increase our morale Now, morale is important. We're done here. You did good. I know things are looking pretty bleak, but just try and remember, everybody's here for you. I guess so, maybe. There we go. Job's a good one. So we let him back into the base. Look, uh, I'll think about what you said. So that is the first thing. Your first Glad. main thing you need to be doing is keeping morale up, keeping people happy. The second thing you need to do is look at your resources. Now, this game, the resources are random, so I can't really give you any idea of where to find them. Uh, well, I can give you some idea. Uh, fuel, best place to try is storage places and uh, petrol stations, or gas stations, for you know, the Americans out there. Uh, for building materials, construction, uh, construction sites, again, other storage areas, storage places, like this one. Uh, bullets. You can find bullets in gun cabinets, you can find them in police stations, gun shops. Gun shops are the most obvious, but you can find them pretty much littered about uh, in people's homes. As this game is set in America, uh, everybody has the right to own, the, own a weapon and defend the property and such. And such. I've got a Z coming after me from here. We're clear. Another thing I'd like to discuss is the map. Right, so when you are running about, well, just normally jogging about, there isn't a circle. Or there's a really small circle that you can't really see. Now, this is how much noise you're making. The longer you hold... Oh, okay, that was loud. Uh, one thing I found out, that if you do something that's very loud, uh, zombies will arrive no matter how many are around you. So, this is the best thing to do, is just get away. Just get in a car and 
try and get as much distance as poss possible between you. Uh, cars are fantastic in this game. They're really easy to drive, really easy to manoeuvre, and they're just they're great battering rams. Uh, I will warn you, uh, when you are using vehicles such as cars and stuff, if you hit the zombies dead on with the front of your car, uh, it will damage the engine and can actually cause an explosion which will attract more zombies. So I usually find the best thing to do is side swipe and then just reverse and drive all over the bodies. Now, I've just been given a mission about hordes getting too close to the, ho to the house. So, the whole aim of this is just to run them over. It increases happiness uh, because people are going to be a bit more safe. Now, if I had a door, the um, best thing to do is open the door when you are driving towards the horde. It'll, it'll allow you to catch a couple more enemies. And also, if you use your door rather than the front of your car, um, there's less chance of your car actually getting that damaged. So that's a bit on vehicles. Now, next thing we'll talk about is survivors. Now, the more survivors in your game, the better. Uh, some of the requirements for various things in your home, if I go in here, is uh, they require certain things. So, if I get to my... There we go. So, say, like, this requires a good cook. Well, I'm lucky to have Ben Green. Ben Green is a good cook. Uh, but the way you... In uh, the initial survivors you have right at the beginning have really low stats. They they don't have a, they're not amazing at certain skills. They're just normal run of the mill, you know, everyday people. But some of the survivors have absolutely great skills. Like this gentleman here. This is, um, I think we could use your help in this area. What do you think? Okay, so this is a hunting mission. So you you do missions like this to help out. Um, Help out find enemies and stuff. Well, find out enemies. You, you know what I mean. Um, build trust. Uh, it's also a good introduction to various zombies. Obviously, AI is good at shooting, but terrible at actually getting into cars. So what I usually find with these is if you just drive by the buildings and pop your horn, you can uh, normally see what's out there. A uh, thing that I will suggest is if you're hunting a feral zombie or a big biggun or a big bastard as they are affectionately known in the game uh, try not to stay indoors as soon as you find it and you've got its attention run and, and I mean like run as fast as you can outside jump into a car and run it over <laughs> If it's a big one, obviously you can't run it over, but fire as much as you can at it, and just try and try and blast it to death. So it says that you have to check all the rooms. So what we'll, we'll do is we'll just have a quick check. Uh, these things here, the uh, cobble boxes and other various things, these are usually a good thing for materials. As you can see, I've just picked up some materials from that. Uh, it doesn't hurt carrying materials, but it does make a big circle of. Bit, a, a larger circle of noise, which can attract more Zeds, which is always, which is not fun. Uh, best way to, majority of the time, the best way to do it is to sprint, to run, to hide, <laughs> and get back to your home base as fast as possible. Uh, because the last thing you want is to be carrying a huge, massive bag. That's it. Right. So we found an army zombie. Oh, okay, we've got a feral. Okay, ferals. Usually, they're a pain. As soon as you knock them down, what you want to do is finish them off. Now, I made that look quite simple, but not uh, when you first fight them, they are a pain. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drink some coffee. Can I drink coffee? I keep forgetting the buttons. Okay. Now, I thought coffee was there to uh, increase your stamina once you've, when you've used got it, but obviously it's not. So we've killed the feral, the feral zombie and we've killed the army zombie we're after as well. So this is good for raising um, trust with various other characters. This is not good. Um, and the more trust you got with characters, you unlock their special abilities. A uh, thing some people miss out in this game is if you go to your stats screen. There we go. Brendan Croker is the guy I'm playing as. Now it shows you your vitality and your uh, stamina. It shows if you're playing them as not. Um, they all have skills: cardio, wits, fighting, shooting. But then they also have weapon specialisations. 
the more you use a weapon, the better you get with it, which is really good and fun. Uh, I can select a weapon specialization, so I'll use Blunt. So, as you can see, you can level up various abilities. Look, training and special attacks, you can choose one of special attacks. Edge weapons are the same, and same with heavy weapons. So it's always good to um, take the time to use various weaponry and do a bit of different, da different damage with various items. Uh, another thing about um, so as you can see, it requires blunt weapon level four. Um, right, okay, that won't let me go down any further. With some um, now, th this screen also is really important as well. Uh, it tells you how much you're going, how much things you're using daily. Um, with uh, how much you actually have. So right now, um, I'm actually running. I'm actually low on food, which is really bad. People aren't going to be very happy. So that means I will need to go and collect more food. Because each day it goes down by a certain amounts. I've got the maximum amount of survivors. I think the maximum amount is 15. And I'm not entirely sure, but uh, the more survivors you have, the more food you'll use, meaning that you'll have to go on more scavenging missions. Uh, if you put out posts on places like this, uh, industrial stores, fast food restaurants and stuff, uh, materials there will keep on generating for a certain amount of time. That It's not infinite, uh, they will run out. But it's just one of the things that you can do to okay, keep... To I'm keep free and clear. See you soon. You know, to keep, keep okay, everybody happy. The only issue with uh, setting up in this place is the place where you deposit materials and, th and stuff is pretty pretty far away. Well, not far away. It's You've got to go through the building and everything. And obviously, your sprinting is reduced when you're in buildings. But, uh... Oh, you know, stuff. Now, let's see. Let's take something that can actually increase my... Okay, so I've got tons of painkillers, but I've got no... Um, nothing. My stamina. Which is a bit of a pain. Uh, like snacks and stuff. Well, what we'll do is we will go and get some food before everybody starts complaining that there is no food. So this game, it does have a big emphasis on stealth, on sneaking about and other various things. But you can run around and make a racket. As you can see, I haven't really snuck about. I haven't really done anything wary. The only real time you really need to be wary is when you're searching areas and um, very, especially right at the beginning of the game when you don't want to be spotted when you've got when you you know losing a survivor is all or nothing. Also another suggestion if you are trying to be sneaky don't hold the L LB button when you are running about. Okay supply locker. So this place should be generating food, but obviously I don't have that much. If you put an outpost on on various places like this, you can actually collect more materials. There we go, food reef. I'll run this home. Roger that. We'll be waiting. This game is it continues. Um, the game can be completed. There is a last mission, and once you do the last mission, that's it. You know, you've left. you've you, you're done. Uh, you can actually bypass this by not doing the last mission, but you will run out of okay. food. You okay. will run out of various resources. Got anything good? And other yeah. things. I got you a pony. Which is not. Then fun. it tried to eat me, so I shot it in the head. That's just disturbing on so many levels. So right now we've got a danger big and sighted. Now big uns are a real pain in the arse. They are a big fat zombie. Now these aren't these aren't the nicest thing to fight. They can actually be really annoying. Okay, so I've just dropped off some food. As you can see, I do have a garden, but gardens don't mean that you're going to always produce tons of food, which is a bit of a pain. Now I wonder if I so you can upgrade various things, like my garden, I can upgrade it to a greenhouse, but I need more materials. But I've got no ammo left in my base to do trades, and I have low food. So it's always a hit and miss of what you need against, you know, what you should, yeah, it's a decision, basically. You need to choose whether you want food, or if you need materials, or... 
the game never really stops. You've never really got enough of something uh, to not worry about it. So, in here. Okay, so we've got some food resources, so I'm going to call for scavengers, and I'm going to... We'll be on there. this home. Roger that. We'll be waiting. So now we should have a little bit more food. We should have um, enough to not starve to death. How's it going? I'm almost there. So things like um, people healing from injuries, uh, people getting tired, and other various things. If you don't have the item to actually heal that person, uh, if you just switch out to another character whilst at your base, that person will go to bed, that person will sleep, and that person will slowly get better, which is always good. Uh, it just makes life a hell of a lot easier. I'm in place. Right, so, what else do we need? We need building material. What we'll do is we'll go to the industrial supply store. So as you can see, I, I don't really, I, you know, I sprint a lot, I don't really use stealth much. Uh, there's occasional times I will use stealth when in buildings, when I don't want to attract any attention. But really, especially this far in the game, uh, you can actually do it be a bit free. Uh, outposts are fantastic for keeping areas Z free. This is good because there's less zombies in those certain areas. You will occasionally come across the occasional Z or the occasional Walker, uh, but you can act. But it's a lot less scary because there's only one. Uh, z zombies you can normally take two on at once, sometimes maybe even three. But when you start getting hordes and about I seven or eight, an opportunity. You'll find it on your map. It gets the more infestations there are, the more dangerous the streets get. It gets difficult. Right, so we've got an infestation mission. Now I did do a guide on how to clear infestations, so if you guys want to check that out, that'd be great great. I also did a tutorial on how to take out uh hordes. So if you want to look at those videos, that'd be grand. It'd be nice for you to like and subscribe if you look at those and you like my channel. But um yeah, that's about it. Uh, quick recap stealth isn't mandatory you can use it pretty much when and where you need it uh, a lot of the other times you can just run about and not not stress uh, da -da -da. outposts are great for clearing areas around your building they can actually increase the morale of various parts of your base because everybody likes seeing zombies get exposed uh, blew up by traps. So what we're going to do for the last bit of the video, I'm going to drop kick this zombie and lay this wrench to his head. So there is a lovely, lovely swarm over there. So this will be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. <laughs> yes. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Remember to like and subscribe. And um, I hope you guys enjoy playing State of Decay as much as I have. I will be doing a few more videos, for, um, again, like mini guides and maybe even a little bit of a walkthrough for the certain, certain missions. Okay, so without further ado, this is B1. Sign enough.